hello everybody. Yeah, it's my great honor to be here to speak in the Hyperlider Global Forum. Uh, and my name is Zi Zhang. I come from Huawei Cloud. I came from China. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's glad to be here to, to share with you guys about the trusted cross-chain system, help different uh, governmental data transfer with high efficiency. So uh, why, I come, why this topic come up? Because there is real scenarios in China that we help the government offices to solve the issues that they have the, you know, the blockchain data silos. So we use a cr trusted cross-chain system to help them build the transfer from different, uh, different blockchain systems and uh, help them to reduce the cost to build their system. So here is the agenda. So I split my, my, this session into three sections. The first one is background and the current status. So uh, I will start to introduce why. Why the, you know, the, the, it goes to this, this status, why they will need such system to, break the data silo for the different blockchain systems. So how, how to stimulate uh, them to use different uh, kinds of blockchain systems in their systems to build their applications. The second section is uh, what we do, what, what is our solution to help them, what, what are the tools we use, the architecture we use, and how we use the cross-chain system to help them to solve this kind of issue. So the third, the third section is uh, we worked with the characters team. So we do some contribution to the characters team. So we build the connection from one interoperability system to connect to another interoperability system. So in that situation, we help to improve the connectivity. That helps the customer to build a wild connection in the cross-chain system. So from, from the trend, we see that uh, in recent days or recent years, we see the Web3.0 is very popular. So we see many news that a different government uh, has started to investigate the Web3.0, they investigate uh, to different te technology. So here I just use uh, McKinsey's words, I quote his word, blockchain technology is considered to be the core technology of the next generation of disruptive technologies after steam engine, power, and the internet. So we all know that after steam engine, it frees uh, people's productivity. Uh, after the electricity, it solves people's basic living need. So after the internet, it's changing the way information is delivered. So we see is uh, the trend is so, obvious, so we see after the blockchain, it uh, is a construction machine of trust to change the value transfers in the whole human society. So as we see the trends, it's a necessary happen since so different countries have published policies to support the government uh, blockchain systems to, uh, to happen. So in the US, in the Europe, in Japan, in India, in South Korea, uh, Southeast Asia. So they all encourage the blockchain system to develop. They have published the many policies for them. Also in China, it is said to be the nation's strategy. So now it's avoiding the virtual reality. It's focused on developing the blockchain system. So here we see the policies in China published. So China actively promulgating policies to incentivize the blockchain industrial application. So in different provinces like in Beijing, Shandong, Xi'an, Jiangsu, Wuhan, etc. So uh, in China, different government offices have published policies to support blockchain to develop. So different offices have start many applications in different uh, offices. And here is the current status for the government affair applications in China. So here I just quote a government blockchain project bidding sensor report in 2021. 
So it increased to 72 projects in production in 2020. So as a trend and the, uh, you know, the policies from the government push, so the, the you know, the applications just blooming. And uh, we have the CIACT report that in 2020, all, all around the world, uh, the, the government uh, application percentage is 32%. So it's uh, really a big value. So, uh, so different government offices try to explore the usage in the nowadays life, so such as uh, data sharing, digital identity, and uh, optimizing the, their government affairs services, improving their government efficiencies. So here we see the two tables. It's uh, in, for the inter uh, the application of uh, blockchain in government affairs attracts international attention. So in different years, in different countries, uh, they have down different uh, so government uh, related uh, applications. So we see the trend here. So in China, it uh, uh, it uh, makes the application blooming, and the application supervision faces new challenges. So we see different offices. They made their own different government uh, you know affair uh, applications based on the blockchain. But as a policy, uh, as a policy uh, admitted, and uh, in China, you know, uh, these years, it also has more than 50 blockchain systems uh, uh, started. So we see a lot of blockchain systems, and the different offices uh, choose different blockchain systems to do their applications. So you see, they have more and more blockchain applications, more and more blockchain data, and more and more smart contracts. But it forces new data silos when they use different blockchain because their blockchain systems cannot connect to each other. Their blockchain systems has different uh, agriculture, have, have different uh, architecture, have different uh, data structure. So uh, it's, it's so blooming and uh, it causes several data silos. So it cannot be developed in the future trends. That uh, as uh, several companies and, uh, and the blockchain system is not maintained. So the applications, the data of the application cannot be read and uh, the, the, the data will cause several issues for the government office. So to help solving this kind of pro problem, so we, we, we just see several key botnets and pinpoints for this kind of situation in four aspects. So the, from the technical aspects, so we see there is no standards and the specifications, it's not unified. And the infra infrastructure is not perfect. So it, it's sad, it's lack, lack of the high level design for the whole system and it lacks the standard for the data and the API. And uh, due to different uh, blockchain system has different, uh, you know, the stability, the security, and they have different data structure, have different security mecha mechanism. So they cannot, cannot talk to each other. They cannot share their data. So they cannot transfer the data. So the data from the different offices cannot uh, cannot connect to each other. They, they are not floating. So uh, in another aspect from the cost, so it's difficult to share information because uh, they are not using the same, you know, the hardware resources and the same, the same software resources. They just uh, build their blockchain application, use their own hardware and software resources. So, so they cannot be repeated. Uh, reused, so it's repeated construction. It causes a lot of waste on the infrastructure. So in the security level, we know the logic of the government affair of applications is very complex. And uh, if the government affair application use a separate, uh, uh, separate blockchain system, 
maybe it has a lower security level. So even if they build the connection from different blockchain systems and uh, this blockchain system have a lower security level, it will be the uh, it will be the security issues for the whole system. It will cause the information leak for the whole system. So from the economist, there is a shortage of blockchain professionals and the cost of operation and maintain maintenance management is very high. So to face with these key bottlenecks and the pinpoints, so we really think we need to reduce the technical difficulties and uh, to help them quickly and efficiently construct of the blockchain system and reduce the technical difficulties and the cost of interconnection to help them build a connection with the whole system. So to reduce the cost and to make the blockchain resources reusable and easy to expand. So it uh, finally comes to uh, the solution that it uh, has a basic blockchain platform plus a unified management and operation system with the eco ecologic and the support service to support the up-level blockchain application. Thus, we will say so how, how our solution is to using the tools and uh, the infrastructure of the tools and how we use the cross-chain system to combine together to build the solution. So th this is what we propose to like a uh, unified blockchain management infrastructure. We see the simple structure here. It's based on the cloud infrastructure. So it has a supposed uh, bus level. The bus is called a blockchain as a service. It's used to manage different blockchain systems to, to f fastly to run, uh, to build a blockchain system and to manage it. So upon, upon the bus level, it has a unified blockchain management infrastructure. It supports the blockchain application and the services. So the customer could call the unified blockchain management infrastructure. It has a set several unified standards for different uh, chains or different uh, ledgers, different uh, bus platforms to register. So it has a unified government affairs standards resource allocation and governance standards, unified identity and authentication standards, and operation supervision standards, and uh, e ecological collaboration standards. So using the unified blockchain management infrastructure, it helps to reuse the resources. It can monitor all the uh, hardware and the, uh, the software together, uh, the people will know how to build the system. They use the system as a builder, you know, for the government. Uh, they, they actually need a builder for that. They control all the resources, they buy the resources, help them to build the chain. But actually when you are using blockchain, you have your separate key, it's also decentralized. So for the building process, we need uh, such, uh, such tool or such infrastructure to help them to build the whole solution. So after building the solution, they would monitor all the node status. Even if they have already built their blockchain application, they could register the blockchain application to the system. It also can, can monitor this. So uh, after uh, so how to support such infrastructure, we need a bus level. So, so Huawei Cloud's bus level is, looks like this. It's our capability per, 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 panorama. So it has uh, the infrastructure with the Huawei Cloud, Hyper Cloud, and Edge Cloud. So we use two blockchain islands. One is Fabric, one is the Huawei Cloud Ledger. So here I mainly to focus on the basic capabilities. If you need to support the up level management, you need to in the bus level to support the alliance management, node management, user management, operation monitoring, alarm log, and uh, several contract management. Because in the 
total management uh, portal, you need to call the bus level to management for the uh, blockchain engine. And uh, with, with better support for the applications in the government use it, we need to do some enhanced capabilities, like the trusted sharing. So we just see in the background that there are several scenarios happened in the whole world, like trusted sharing, and uh, multi-part compu computation. So we also support the computing sandbox. So in, the, uh, in different countries, uh, that page, we have seen several uh, uh, DID scenarios. So we also support the distributed identities. It follows the W3C standard. So in order to help to do the cross-chain services, so we have the enhanced ability of cross-chain services. So this is the architecture for the blockchain management platform. So in the architecture, we could say the underlying blockchain, it has a bottom layer blockchain platform and the other underlying blockchain platform. It's support to do the blockchain management and the operation and the maintenance management. Uh, in the bottom layer blockchain platform, it has a blockchain underlying technologies to support to use different blockchain. Uh, abilities. So in the bottom layer blockchain management interface, uh, this is a key point. So uh, when we do the management platform, you need to make several standards. So how to, how to let others know your standards? You just publish several interfaces. So they register their platform, they use a platform, they need to follow your, your interface standards. So this here, it has a unified security unified operation, unified resources, unified cross-chain, unified supervision. So they register their platform, follow these standards. So the whole platform could work in, the, in all the standards. So the security in the system to build the whole chain network could follow the same security level. It will not have a shortage. So uh, the hack or something will not uh, to, to attack the shortage. So the upper level, it could uh, do some management about the alliance management, node management, uh, and uh, for the yellow part, it's pluggable. So because uh, in different government customers, they need to use their own identity system. They need to use their own process management system. So it's pluggable, they could just use their own system and uh, for, for better usage, we have also support several blockchain common components, like digital identity, VC, verifiable credentials, trusted exchanges. So we also have the smart contract warehouse. It has supplied several contract templates. They could directly use the contract template to deploy their contract and to develop their uh, government applications. So for the blockchain application repository, they have the government uh, collaboration and the directory management and the digital archive, archiving application as a sample application. They could uh, just modify the application and uh, directly use uh, to build their application and the solution very fast. So this is a basic business process to how, how to use this, uh, just the management portal so it's, uh, I, I just uh, use a three simple one to just uh, let you understand how it works. So the first process is creating a tenant and a user. So the tenant submit a request to the portal that he would uh, create a tenant user. So the management will get the request and uh, he will uh, approving the tenant cre creation. So you would wonder why there is a management. So here the management, is like the DAO, you know, the decentralized anonymous organization. It could be a DAO because it's a, it's a builder, you know, it will help the government to building all the infrastructures for the blockchain system. So the builder would pay the money to pay the resources. It's just like a cloud. You know, if you use a cloud, you need to use the cloud to buy the resources, buy the virtual machine, buy the Docker container. So it looks like this. So it's like a door or the, or the, you know, or the 
uh, admin who pay the money for the construction. So in the back, back uh, technical aspect, so there is a resource delivered and the service deployment. So the end user will see, oh, the user has created and the permission is a stand. Then he could do creating and joining a chain. Then the management would do the approval uh, and prepare the resources. So in the background, it's resource allocation and the chain member update. So the last step is smart contract usage. So the, the tenant will develop and uh, submit the smart contract. So the manager would uh, approve and archive and distribute the contract. So in the background, it's running the contracts. So uh, to the user, it's installing the smart contract. So that is a simple process. So here is uh, the complex process of the smart contract usage. So we have the contract template warehouse. So in the first step, the uh, generally the alliance leader is responsible for the contract. So he would query the contract's templates and uh, develop the, a contract based on the tem template. Then he will submit the contract to, to all the alias participant for collecting the re review, just uh, collecting the votes. Does the uh, does, uh, union uh, approve we install such template, uh, such contract, smart contract? If they all agreed, so uh, he get all the, all the agreement, so he would uh, just uh, follow the process that send it to the administrator. Administrator is not, a, it depends, it's not only one administrator, maybe it's many administrators just like a doll, you know. So the administrator group who may vote or just the approve the smart contract and uh, submit and uh, record this information, then it will, uh, if it agrees, so it will uh, trigger the different, uh, you know, different uh, nodes to install the smart contract to help them build the whole solution. So this helps solve the issue we just uh, recognize in the pain points for the, uh, reduce the difficulties for the solution. But uh, if, if they have built such, uh, such a chain and uh, many chains exist, so how we could break the data silo and uh, use the trusted cross-chain system to help the data transfer from different blockchain. So let's see. Uh, so he, here, his, this page uh, is here is to say using the system, it's like building the chain network. So we have the requirement that using this system, uh, the, we, you are curious, so how the system would build for the government? Because if you use a system for the city or for a province, and many enterprises would like to join on the chain network, so he could uh, build such a primary chain for some offices and uh, side chains for several offices with several enterprises. It uh, forms like uh, you know the chain network, so maybe use a system. It could uh, include uh, hundreds of nodes in this chain network to form a big chain network. And uh, with the uh, you know I just uh, uh, draw a supply chain there. It's like when you have an existing chain, and uh, it uh, would like to talk to the chain network. So how we could talk to the chain network, we, we will see uh, in the following page. So uh, here I will say that uh, uh, the advantages of using the whole uh, deployment management system, it will full stack cloud service. So and, uh, it can dynamically scale in and out. It's intensive construction, low cost and high efficiency because the constructor can know how many resources is used. They can know the workflow. They can know what the chain network looks like. Yes, because you build this chain network, if you don't know what, what it looks like, uh, it, it is, is something, uh, something wrong would happen. So your system would be broken. It will influence some business. 
So actually, it's a really decentralized permission because each participant manages and controls their own blockchain nodes and the cloud resources. So only the constructor could help them to build, but they have their own private key and public key. They, they could control their own node. So to support such kind of chain network, so the traditional network management uh, doesn't, uh, uh, it, it ca cannot uh, work on this situation. So we have done some hierarchical network management to support ultra large scale node networks. So in traditional networks, we use gossip to synchronize data, but uh, gossip has many redundant messages. So the network performance deteriorates rapidly with the increase of the node number. So we see the curve, it goes down very fast. So we just uh, figure out, so we use the hierarchical management to manage the federation chain network. So the data synchronize from the core to the edge and uh, reducing the redundant messages and reducing the impact of the performance. So in large scale network, we also use uh, such kind of consensus uh, algorithm for them, uh, like uh, in traditional PBFT algorithm. Uh, there are several processes like pre, uh, pre, uh, yeah, pre repair, repair, pre submit, uh, etc. So uh, each step, each node will. Uh, send messages to each other, so the message complexity is very big, it's O n square. So uh, we use a raft, a raft consensus, but uh, we, we consider the security, so we combine with the T, it's trusted execution environment. So we leverage the T to execute the consensus core logic, convert the BFT issue into CFT issue. So in the meantime, we retain the BFT consensus security and improve the efficiency. We see the graph that the messages go to different nodes only once. So it's greatly reduced the message complexity into the ON. So it's more suitable for the large scale network. So the large scale network is from here. So we build such hundreds of nodes large scale network. But how do we make the uh, connection from like uh, from side chain, side chain A to go to call side chain B or really go to the supply chain. So here we, we need to use our own uh, cross chain uh, method. So it's a concert, consortium cross chain method. So we use a relay, relay uh, uh, method for building the console. Uh, building the cross chain method, so we see the we see the uh, several pages before that the chain network. There is a primary chain you remember. So we build the we build the cross cross chain solution and a cross chain middleware on different nodes. So it forms that uh, each circle in the chain network could be a relay. They could transfer data uh, with trustful. So, so I just uh, say uh, introduce a process. So, if people want to uh, separately use a cross chain solution, they need to register their chain to the trust relay, and the relay know the chain, and uh, he need to authorize what data uh, the chain A could uh, could uh, access. Like we have several author authorizations, like the uh, several contracts. You could read the contracts, or you could write the contracts, or you could read the ledger. It's in different author authorization authorization level, because in, if you read the ledger, you could read the local contracts. You read more data. So we we make the it's very specific. So. The process is that if you send a cross-chain transaction, it will generate a proof. That's to prove that it's from your chain, and the proof will uh, they will put the hash code of the proof 
and hash code of the cross chain transaction to the relay and send the message directly to another cross chain component. Another cross chain component gets this information and verify from the relay. They know, okay, it's from you and uh, the message from you. And uh, he will get the message and uh, and uh, he will write the cross chain information to the to the blockchain B, and this is the first phase. So we use a two phase uh, two phase commitment, and uh, he will get the response and uh, the response proof back to the submitter. So the submitter will also verify the proof and the result to written in the uh, blockchain B. If it's all success, the, the, you know, the log will, will be released and uh, the data will really written to the blockchain to keep the atomicity and the fi finality. So in this process, it's only for the both right solution. If you use a uh, read solution, it's more easier and not so complex. So uh, in order to optimize such uh, uh, process, because this process is two-phase and you need to lock the, uh, lock the data to help protect the atomicity. So we have uh, made some uh, improvement for this. So the cross-chain relay would transfer the chain proof, keeping the trans transaction trustworthy. So the traditional consulting platform have different, uh, uh, have different uh, underlying technologies and uh, make some data silos as, we, as I mentioned before that the government use different blockchain system to make their different uh, applications. So uh, if, if we use a such cross-chain interaction system, uh, if you don't generate the proof, it will cause a data tampering man in the middle attack and the data loss and the insufficient privacy, privacy protection. So if we use a proof generator, so uh, we in the blockchain A, you just uh, submit uh, to pre-commit a uh, proof and the acceptor and uh, yeah, pre-commit the proof. Uh, so at last, uh, the, uh, if they all, verified and the submitter uh, co commit to the proof and the acceptor commit to the proof. So uh, when we finish the two-phase uh, uh, process, it will finally write the data to both chain. And in the process, each step will cause a rollback for the whole process. Uh, we use a chain code uh, level account locking and a complete row pack mechanism to ensure the atomicity. So here uh, we see that from the relay, we have some the cross chain component to make, make the data transfer. So if you, if you use a single point uh, component, if we, it, it will cause a single point failure and when you cause single point failure, the process will not continue and uh, the atomicity need to be ensured. And the, if the account is locked and it can't be unlocked in this scenario if the uh, component is broken. So we make the horizontal expansions for, the, for expanding many cross-chain components to support when a cross-chain component is down, the other component will take over your process, take over your, take over your transactions and to go on the process. So how to achieve the 100,000 more than transaction per second with a high concurrency? So we use, if we use a linear network mode, when cross-chain traffic is heavy, so it will become the bottom network, bottom bo bottleneck, and cause the service co congestion. So if we use support the horizontal capacity expansion networking, we could expand for the 
for the relay service for to build a different uh, you know the cross chain channels it will make it uh, support high throughput transactions in different uh, in different channels and it will not influence each other so uh, as we as i introduced default so i we use a fine grained permission control for the cross chain contract access. So the overall author authorization solution would expose the contracts other than the smart contract on the blockchain. Bring risks of privacy disclosure and unauthorized tampering. So we use a fine grained authorization uh, for the you know for specific uh, contract read and write or for the ledger read, so it will making the cross chain more comfortable and secure. So we integrated the DID to the cross chain system. So in this system, we will help to uh, build a influence. Uh, we, we will help to build a unified identity system. Because in different blockchain system, they have their own ID system, identity system. So if you build the authorization for several uh, identity, uh, if you have more identities or you have the off-chain identity, it cannot be recognized and it may cause several, you know, the identity forgery. So we use a DID to just uh, map a, a ID group for, for such kind of authorization. So this group can only read se several contracts. This group can only read, write the contract. So a different ID systems could map to this ID. They use this ID, they could uh, just uh, improve the efficiency and reduce the risk of identity forgery. So here we have did some, you know, use some zero knowledge uh, uh, techniques to help prevent the information anonymization. Yeah, to strengthen the privacy protection. Because here's a scenario that if you use, a, if you are the user in blockchain, yeah, you want to, to uh, ask some proof in the blockchain B. So they will, ask you to show your identity uh, through the through the process your identity will be exposed your privacy will be leaked so uh, it's uh, if we support several yeah we, we just support several contracts include uh, uh, integrated with the zk knowledge proof so you just uh, show the proof that you get several you get several value is verified. What is a verification? It's, uh, it's an equation that uh, you satisfy the equation. So you show that to another chain and another chain to take the equation verification proof to the, to the relay to test and verify. It will help to satisfy the situation to uh, protect the user privacy in the cross-chain situation scenario. So also to satisfy in Chinese, you know, Chinese uh, standards for the, for the cross-chain system to build a such kind of chain network, we need to satisfy the national standard and uh, international standard. So we need to build a such solution for different uh, systems. We need to support a different kind of deployment. Uh, so this is uh, our solution to build the chain network and make the different nodes in chain network to talk to each other, use uh, the techniques, and use the cross-chain cross -chain system. So the cross-chain system is integrated to the uh, chain management system. Uh, the user could uh, just call the interface to build the connection if they could register their chain to the system and the cross-chain system would help them to build the connection and they just send the cross-chain transactions, it would work. 
So uh, it will solve the problem of reduce the technical difficulties for the interconnection. So the last part is uh, uh, we did some contribution to the characters to improve the connectivity. So we contribute to the plugins. So we, we have our TCS is trusted, yeah, trusted cross chain service. It uh, uh, we we just made some plugins for connecting to characters. Characters is also a hyperledger project. It is for the cross chain services. So this is a first cross chain service interoperability interoperability system to connect to another interoperability operability system, they could expand uh, different uh, connections because if you use the interoperability system to connect to a chain, you need to develop such SDK or develop such interfaces uh, to face different chains. So if we connect together, uh, so they could use what, what we developed and we could use what uh, the characters already have in the, in the ledger, so it's a both main solution. So it's a flow for characters to connect to the TCS. So the characters is a component of uh, used to connect to, uh, the agent characters is a component to, to TCS to connect to the, uh, to, the, to the characters and it implements the interface of I plugin ledger to, for, for them to connect. So also, uh, if characters is written in TypeScript, so our TCS is written in Go, so we need to use an open API to generate the Go interface, to generate the interface, TypeScript interface, and the validator TCS can register the verifier and uh, like, uh, act like a normal validator. So the characters business logical can send the transaction and the monitor the ledger of the TCS. It's actually not monitor the ledger of TCS, it monitor the, the chain connect to the TCS. So this is a stream from the TCS to characters. So the process is that agent characters will can connect directly to the verifier and call the transaction to get the proof and uh, you know, the verifier can access the blockchain through the validator to get the info. So we, we both need to, uh, you know, to, to uh, accomplish the interface for the, for the TCS. So that is uh, what, what we have done and uh, uh, that's all for, for the sharing. It's what we have done to use uh, to what we recognize as a, you know, the pain points and how we did our solution to, to solve the uh, issues and uh, yeah, to expand the connection, we just uh, work with the TCS. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for coming.